video editing for educational videos. Hello, and thank you for taking the time to watch this educational video on, well, basically, educational videos. I'm Chris Morosky from the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. Over the next 10 minutes or so, I hope to provide you with enough information on how to get started filming and editing your own educational videos. After watching this video, the viewer should be able to better understand the basic equipment required to pull off the project, the importance of a screenplay, an introduction to video file download and editing, incorporation of audio files and soundtracks, and advanced techniques such as transitions, titles, and picture-in-picture. -picture. Even for the most early adopters, there are many uses for video editing. Whether it's converting dull PowerPoint slides into condensed videos that can be played on mobile devices, or editing your hours of robotic surgery footage into a nice 10 minute video with a little picture in picture built in. Whether you are playing the role of an armored OBGYN superhero, or really just want to do something special with all of those family videos that are building up on your computer's hard drive. Learning the basics of video editing can get you started on the exciting path of combining education with creativity in whatever way you see fit. It goes without saying that you're going to need a video camera. This is the video camera that I use nowadays. It's light, has built-in memory, a touchscreen flip screen, and a solid built-in microphone. Newer cameras also have longer battery life. Tripods are optional, but for $40 to $50 for a fairly decent tripod, they are worth the purchase. Lastly, you are going to need a modern computer. By modern, I mean a computer with enough memory to store your large video files and enough speed to process your video files overlaid with voiceovers, soundtracks, and transitions. Your computer is going to need video and audio processing software. Most new Macintosh computers come with iMovie and GarageBand built in for this. Since I am a Mac user, I am going to show off how to use these programs in this video. Once you've finished reading the instruction manuals for all of your equipment, you're ready to start filming. If you're really serious about putting together a well-organized video, there's one more thing you really should do before you fire up your video camera. Writing up a screenplay prior to filming helps give your video better continuity and flow. It also allows you to send exactly the message that you want your viewers to receive. Shooting your scenes off a screenplay allows you to film based on location rather than storyline. This saves an incredible amount of time. Working from a script allows you to shoot your scenes the right way the first time. The more information that you can put into the screenplay, the better. Write down how you envision the scene, background, angle, costumes, props, etc. Okay. So now with a well-crafted screenplay in hand, we're ready to start filming. For effect, I'm going to show you four quick clips of raw footage that we're going to put together using some of the basic techniques that I'm about to show you to make an amusing short video. No! So you kind of have an impression of where we're going with this short video, but let's just see how we get there. Once you've shot your scenes, you need to download them to the computer. If you have iMovie open when you connect your video camera, you can select which video files you would like to import. Each of the scenes are brought into a new event. Each scene is an individual clip within this event. Events can be named and thought of as a repository of all of your clips. You then double click on your clip to create a yellow border. You can drag the ends of the yellow border to select the exact part of the clip that you then drag into your project below. Your project contains the edited clips and is the actual movie that you will be making. Believe it or not, with just this little bit of video editing, you could make your first movie. However, I want to share with you another piece of software that can help you do audio recordings that you can use to do voiceovers for your videos. When you open GarageBand, you will want to select a new voice recording project. You will have to name it, and it will open with both male and female basic tracks. To record, gently click the red record button. When the sound clip is finished, again hit the red record button to stop recording. 
Once you have read all of your voice clips, save them to file. When you exit GarageBand, you want to make sure to save your audio file with an iLife preview, as this will allow you to open the audio file in iMovie. Returning to iMovie, you can select all of your GarageBand audio files by selecting GarageBand in the Content Library. When you select an individual audio file, you will be able to see the details of the file in the event window. Just like with video files, you can select the exact part of the audio clip you want and then drag it into the project. Next you will want to use the adjust tool and select the audio icon for each clip. For a complete voiceover, you will want to drop the sound of your video clip to 0%. Lastly, I want to show you how to bring in some music as a soundtrack or background music. It works the same way as the GarageBand audio recordings, but instead you want to select iTunes from the content library. Here you will have access to all of the music that you have stored on your computer in iTunes. Just like creating the audio clips before, you can select which part of the music file that you want to bring into the project by using the yellow border editing tool. Then you drag the clip down into the project. You are now on your way to creating an exciting new movie. Next, I would like to share with you some slightly more advanced techniques that will give your movie a little additional creativity. The first is... Yep, that's right, transitions. The last two are called wipe left and wipe right. This one is called mosaic. And this one is called spin out. Transitions can be great, but you can definitely overdo them. You don't want your viewers getting transition fatigue. Also, transitions use up a lot of processing speed. If you use a lot of them with a video file that has voiceover and a soundtrack, you may notice things starting to get all jumbled up. To incorporate transitions into your movie, select Transitions from the Content Library. Next, click and drag the transition that you like in between two video clips. You can adjust the duration of the transition by selecting the information icon under Adjust. Titles are another great way to add creativity to your video. Obviously, they're good for title scenes, but they're also very good for labeling anatomy with laparoscopy videos. You can make them appear in the right upper corner, sparkle across the middle of the scene, or come together in the middle of the scene, and then fly apart. Titles are also found in the content library. Again, once you find the title that you are looking for, you simply drag it over the clip that you want it to appear on. Under Adjust, You can change the font type, size, color, and characteristics. Here is also where you will type in the words that you want displayed. Last but not least, I'd like to show you how to use Picture in Picture. This is great for laparoscopy and hysteroscopy videos. Here you can show the hands of the surgeon while at the same time watching the laparoscopy video. With the right adjustments, you can see the Picture in Picture video in the right upper corner or in the left lower corner. For picture in picture, you need two movie clips. The first clip will be the larger background clip that you drag into the project. Next, highlight and drag the second clip over the first. Under adjust, you will want to select the video overlay settings. From the drop down menu, select picture in picture. At this point, you can move the smaller picture to where you want it on the screen. You can also adjust the size. Well, that should just about do it. With all of this, you should be able to start making some pretty excellent videos. I'm going to leave you with a little cliffhanger. Here is the final edited version of all the little video clips that we've been using all along. Look for my next video on even more advanced techniques such as slow motion and video effects. Happy hunting!